Well, we watched a lot this weekend, and in fact, you watched three shows today. I did not watch the UFC because there was another project we're working on, which we'll tell everybody about here in a while. But uh, you watched UFC, and then we watched Rampage, and we watched Halloween Havoc. And SmackDown. Well, that was last night. Well, no, we watched SmackDown. I, mean, I guess we watched the, uh, the last uh, We watched some of it last night and some of it this so, morning, but, yeah. Man, I guess, I guess we'll start with Halloween Havoc. The story of this show was it had a really good opening ladder match, it had a great main event, and man, the rest of this show ranged from horrible to eh, just kind of there. Yeah. I, I really liked the ladder match, but the main event was excellent. You know, Braun Breaker retaining in the three-way, um, all three guys. Timing was great. Moves were great. I mean, it was it was so well executed. Um, I mean, I expected a great match because, you know, Dragunov and J.D. McDonough are very, very underrated. I've seen them for years. They're very, very good. And Braun Breaker hanging with them, at, I mean, he's fantastic, you know, all things considered. He hung with them. He didn't look like he was being carried by them. I mean, they, they're more experienced than him, but he hit all of his things and um, just a tremendous main event. And uh, ladder match, you know, I mean, they went out there and, uh, uh, you know, Kane did a lot of stunts and um, it was, it was really, really good. Um, there was a lot of stuff that, you know, people are going to be feeling and all that, but uh, I want to run everything down. Well, it opened up with the ladder match. Wes Lee won the ladder match, beating Carmelo, Nathan Frazier, Von Wagner, Oro Mensa. They went 20 minutes. And on the Tuesday NXT show, they did a tag match, and Wesley was just pinned clean in the middle of the ring. There was no outside. I mean, it was a, it was a tag match, but still, you know, there was nothing that happened with the other partner. It was just two guys ended up outside. He ended up in the ring. He got hit with um, Carmelo's finish and pinned. Yep. And when it was over, I thought, Wesley's the one with the winner, huh? This guy's winning on Saturday, and he did. And in fact, that's exactly what they did. Yeah, it was a very good match. Uh, you know, it was, they do ladder matches now that are, uh, I put this in air quotes, safer, but I mean, people are still taking bumps on ladders and the hard, you know, the back it, to the they, ladder. They, 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 never, they, they didn't do, they didn't do anything. They didn't do the stunt type dangerous stuff. They didn't do the they did really the falling risky. on ladder dangerous stuff. Yeah. And there, there were several of those. There was like a, a double moonsault off the ropes, which, which was supposed to be a Spanish fly. I think, but it was basically a double moonsault onto a ladder. Uh, Carmelo, I think, did his leg drop. Uh, there was another ladder, riding the ladder down spot. Von Wagner's outside. Uh, at one point, he tried to bring this really tall ladder up from underneath the ring. And uh, the ladder was so long that he he essentially had to yank the ladder over the barricade, and he was almost taking out fans with this ladder. Yeah, because the ladder was too long. The ladder yeah. so long, and they had, they had ladder bridges, and they took bumps. Uh, I think it was um, Frazier did a splash off the post through a ladder bridge that Von Wagner was on on the outside, yep. and just uh, tons of, of big spots. And then at the very end, it was just the big brawl on top of the ladder with uh, Mello and, and Lee, and Wesley finally knocked him off, basically gave him a uh, meteora onto a ladder bridge. And then he starts to climb, and he's doing the dramatic climb. And he's doing the slow, dramatic climb where you're expecting, oh, now somebody's going to rush in and stop it. But they and taken, he just kept climbing. They had taken everybody out. Yep, and he got the North American title, and he won it, and cried, and the fans chanted, you deserve it. And it was a very good opening ladder. Yeah, match. real strong, real strong match. Um, not the best ladder match of all time, but boy, they, you know, I mean, the one thing on the show is, you know, they, you know, the, everybody worked really hard in this match and they were very willing to take some, you know, big, big bumps and came up with a few innovative spots. And yeah, it was a, a great ladder match, but not like, uh, not the greatest ladder match, but a, a great opening match, yes. So they had advertised Mandy Rose versus Alba Fire, and instead of doing a match, they... Uh, well, they did do a match. Well, they eventually did, but instead of opening with the match, they, they did a skit. And Mandy Rose, Gigi, and JC are in a car, 
and they're going to a haunted house. Well, Alba Fire dared them or, or challenged them to come, and JC, of course, said, you know, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? And Mandy's just like, we're going to go. And then you had the spoof on, on a horror movie where they all split up, and JC goes, don't you know in the horror movie you're not supposed to split up? And so they all split up, and then Alba Fire took them all out, you know, took out... Um, yeah, it's like they, they were doing a Halloween skit, which was also supposed to be real, because they're in the haunted house, and Alba Fire is laying out the heels. Although, to be fair, like Mandy Rose is supposed to be the heel, but Mandy Rose was double teamed and triple teamed by Alba Fire and, and zombies oh, and there monsters. Zomb- yeah, there were, there were. like she's she's trying to get Alba Fire, and all of a sudden a zombie grabs her, and then it's two on one against Mandy Rose. And so anyway, it's 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 so horrible. It was terrible, and it went on forever. It just kept going and going and going. And finally they go all through this haunted house and it's so corny and campy. They're all they're all so they're they're all taken out. Yeah, Alba Fire leave. takes them all out and so then they, she they, kidnaps they, Mandy. Right. Well well Again. G- Gigi and JC are beaten up and left at the haunted house. Yes. And then Alba Fire takes Mandy's car and Mandy who and she's, Mandy who she's laid out and drives her to the performance center. Yes. Yeah. They she took her back to the building. And man, this thing when this thing was over, I thought, you know what? I'm torn because they advertised a match and they gave us this. Oh, I knew they were going to do and a in match. In a sense, that's bullshit. But I did not want to see the match after this. Well, the thing- and then they gave us a match later. Well, they were driving to the. They were driving, and and they'd made it very clear. I was hoping she'd run out of gas. Well, they flat didn't run- tire, something. Well, yeah. Well, they made it. They made it very clear when they were there that. Uh, you know, we're going to do this there, and then we're going to have the match. So I don't want to hear that WCW did this shit back in the day because they went out of business because they did so much dumb shit. I don't want to hear that they did this shit before on different NXT Halloween. Well, they, they did. They did this in with I Dexter Loomis and, and, and Carmel it was and, um, um, and uh, Grimes. Yeah, this was really bad. This was yeah, monstrously bad. Well, I mean, it was bad. It was bad because they they had done it. With Dexter Loomis and and uh, Cameron Grimes, so it was like a repeat of something that they had already done, and you know. But even like the Dexter Loomis Cameron Grimes thing, it was like they shot a goofy mini movie that was just supposed to be a goofy mini movie. Fine, whatever. This was supposed to be real because it led to the match. But and here's the worst part: Mandy Rose won the match. Oh yeah. Man, although, although, although it's, un- she's with, with, impossible with, to defeat. Yeah, with with outside interference. I mean, they did come back, you know. But it's like the whole thing was to, the whole Alba Fire thing was to take out J.C. Jane and uh, Gigi with the idea that it's going to be Mandy and Alba Fire one on one. So her whole goal is she did that, and they still got to the building on time to interfere. Not selling being killed by zombies. By no, the way. not at all. Yeah, they even still- Midsole getting eaten by zombies. Yeah, they. I mean, so yeah, I I thought that the 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 zombie movie was really bad and like again too long, and then you know the end result is Mandy wins anyway. So, all right. So there are two things on this show, and I will admit, I personally hate this. If you listening to this or as a viewer don't mind it, that's fine. Okay, but if you're doing a casket match. And you get tossed off the post. And you land on the casket. And you're inside the casket. And you go through the roof of the casket. And you crash into the casket. And you're dead. You lose. Booker T was saying the same thing. Yes. Their rule is, well, you have to be thrown in and you have to shut the lid. But the lid was broken. The lid was destroyed because the guy went through the lid and was killed. That's what happened in this match with uh, Grayson Waller. He went through the casket. They ruled that because the lid had been broken, you can't shut the lid. And there, I'm not, I feel like I'm talking about like a, an actual WCW Halloween Havoc. Yeah. This is the dumbest rule. So then the lights go out. What, what, what was it? Was it was um, Cruz that was in the casket, not Grayson Waller? No, what? Cruz threw Grayson. No, Grayson Waller got screwed. You're right. Apollo no, Grayson, Cruz went Grayson Waller was the one. Yeah. Yeah. So then the lights Cruz go out. Cruz, Cruz, Cruz was in the casket. Yes. The lights go out, and then the lights come back on. And now he's and, out of the and casket. Cruz is out of the casket, and, and he's, he's got fine. he's and got he's druids. Yeah. 
So then they go back and they're they're wrestling again. And it was a casket match. So it's like throw the guy in the casket, go to shut the lid. The guy won't let you shut the lid. You try to shut the lid again. He blocks it. He gets out. Now both guys are in. Both guys get out. I mean, it was it was fine. But I would not say this was a good match. I didn't like it because it of was, I, I didn't like it because of the, the of that finish that you said. I just thought after that, and then you do the lights out thing, and then he's okay. It's like I didn't think that like the the um, this. I don't know. I'm not into the supernatural when it's non supernatural guys when it's supposed to be two guys that are just like wrestlers. Um, so I mean, I just thought the whole thing was just completely goofy. I didn't like it at all. Um, and the other thing too is. You did this thing where you have to slam the door, and then you follow it with a match where, again, you have to slam a door. And it's just like it's two matches. I mean, again, it's too many gimmick matches on one show, I thought, also as, as part of it. But also those two gimmick matches, even though like the ambulance match and the casket match are different, the spots, the finish spots are identical. So by the time in the... Um, you know, and they, they did some really cool stuff, I thought, in the um, Julius Creed match with um, Damon Kemp, where they would slam the door. And, and essentially, I, I mean, the idea that they slammed the door and um, Julius Creed would put his hand through the door, so he's slamming the door in his hand, and he's doing that because, um, and taking that door slammed right on his hand because he was trying to protect Brutus from losing his job. I really liked that story aspect of it. But I had to so but by the time I saw it, it didn't really mean that much to me because I just seen a match where they're slamming guys and you just stop the thing with your hand, you know? So that's I, I didn't think I didn't really like that two matches like that on the same show. Well, Waller got choke slammed into the casket and Apollo Cruz won. We had a Chase U segment where Andre Chase uh, is quizzing them on the history of Halloween Havoc. And Duke Hudson is now a transfer student to Chase U. But he's a rat. And uh, Bodie Hayward does not trust this guy. Well, you know why? Because he's trying to hit on, you know, you know this is where this is going. Oh, yeah. He's hitting on Thea Hale. And yes. Bodie, Bodie Hayward has a crush on Thea Hale, but he, but he won't admit it yet. Yes. So that's where this thing's going. So it's a story. Um I mean, that's a story, but we already had a story that Chase U's land is being bought, and I haven't seen anything on that in two weeks now. That's true. Where's that story? I don't know. Maybe I've got a lot of st- we, we saw a lot of stories today that were very confusing. That was more on AEW. We had Roxanne Perez and Cora Jade, Weapons Wild, 13 minutes. They would have had a way better one-on-one singles match, but instead they had to use all these weapons and... Some of it didn't look good. Some of it looked all right. Some of it really looked bad. We had uh, cold spray being used. By the way, in two matches in a row, we'll get to. Well, well, the other one was, was fire extinguisher. was the same type of thing. Same, same spraying stuff in the face. Yeah. And then, you know, they brawl all over the place. And then there's this big platform. And they're both fighting on this platform. And... Uh, well, this is the perch. The, the perch. Yeah, they're up there uh, on the, the perch in the uh, thing where they uh, overlook the ring, and they do they they do interviews up there. Have people stationed up there all the time? Yeah. So so they they tear the the thing off, and and uh, Roxanne has this opportunity to shove Cora off, but she just can't bring herself to do it, and somehow it leads to them both falling off Backwards. and going through a table. Yeah, and, and then up, and then getting up. Yep, they end up back in the ring, and there's chairs in the ring, and. Uh, Cora's screaming at Roxanne that I was never your friend. Then she gets backdropped onto the chairs. She gets the pop rocks onto the chairs. And uh, Cora Jade gets the win. Which, again, if you watch the uh, show on Tuesday, it's like uh, no, Roxanne... Cora Jade didn't get the win. Roxanne Perez got the win. Yeah, Roxanne won this match. Yeah, yeah. But on Tuesday, Roxanne got beaten yes. by the main roster person. Yes. But Cora Jade beat the main roster person, even though it was via DQ. Yeah. So I figured Roxanne was going to get the win here. So, uh, yeah, Roxanne hit the pop well, rocks. Ro- Ro- Roxanne, Ro- Roxanne also lost the first meeting. So Roxanne, yes. pretty much, I mean, it's like you don't have to do anything because, you know, you can book any way you want right now. But but I I was expecting, you know, this after Roxanne lost the first one that she would win this one. So that's what happened, and that was fine. Um, yeah, I... Um, it you know so many so many weapon shots it took me out of the match i didn't think the match was particularly great they worked very hard you know it's just like some you know again like stipulation matches should to me should enhance the match and i know that like when you have weapons matches and things like that um it's usually 
better because people have more latitude or the no DQs or the street fights. You have more latitude than in a regular match. And, you know, WWE ends every house show with a weapons match now because, you know, you have your regular matches, then you end with the big weapons match. So, um, but in this case, it's like, it was just weapon shot after weapon shot after weapon shot. It felt like they weren't really doing a match. They were just hitting each other with weapons. And those matches to me, um, they get old if they go any length of time. And not that this was a long match, but it just, um, I just thought that uh, thought that that aspect didn't really click. We had a segment with uh, Shotzi and Quincy Elliott, and then Lash Legend came out, and uh, Lash Legend and Quincy, two people who are not very good in the ring, but they can talk, and they got in a big argument back and forth, and that led to Shotzi laying out Lash with a DDT, and that was a segment there. Julius Creed and Damon Kemp in an ambulance match. They worked their ass off. They went 15 minutes, and this is what I'll say about this match. This came off as two very intense guys that really wanted to have a hardcore match. They worked very Didn't really know how. <laughs> like, they just hit each other with stuff. Like, the first eight minutes of this match was excruciating because they just kept hitting each other with stuff. Over and over and over again. And then finally it started to get good as they went backstage and they did this spot where uh, Julius gets thrown in the in the ambulance. And as you noted, uh, Damon Kemp sl- trying to slam the door, but to keep the door from closing all the way, Julius puts his fingers and his fingers keep getting smashed by the door, which I liked the story that he, he he was so determined not to let his brother have to leave NXT if he lost that he would sacrifice his fingers. But man, this dude did not sell his fingers at all. I know. Man, I, he well, got after, out of that ambulance and he's throwing punches. Well, he threw, and he's he threw, lifting he threw, the dude. He threw, he threw forms, but he but he did he did throw him around. He yeah, he did not sell those fingers. And they brawl all, all over the place. And then finally at the end, Julius just runs wild on Damon. And he hits him with like 500 chair shots on the outside. <laughs> he picks him up and he power bombs him onto the stretcher. He's just killed this guy. And then he starts dragging him back to the ambulance. And I, like I'm sure everybody else, is thinking Roderick Strong's going to jump out of this ambulance right now. Because, man, he's beating this guy so bad. This is where this big swerve is coming. And he just beat him and beat him and beat him and beat him and beat him. And then took him in the back, threw his ass in the ambulance, shut the doors and won. Yep, well, so it's just a very uh, dominant win by Julius Creed. No Roderick Strong, nowhere to be seen. Nope. So if they're going to do something there, I, I don't know what they're going to do. But he won. His brother does not have to leave NXT forever. And uh, it was a worthwhile thing to watch. I I thought by the end it was pretty good. I mean, um, slo- sloppy-ish, good. Um, you know, again, the... Julius Creed definitely has something there, and you know Damon Kemp is going to be really, really good at this, uh, and is getting really good at this already. And uh, you know, um, again, I think that they would have probably had a better match without the ambulance stipulation, especially because it was following the casket match. But for for the fact that they've never done a match like this, they've probably never done any kind of a major stip match. I thought it was about it was probably better than than you would expect it to be. I would say this was better than I would have expected. Yeah, I think that they did a good job, um, you know, with the flaws of you know the what they had to do, which is again, you know, we had a weapons match with Core Jade and and Roxanne, and then we followed with a match with all kinds of chair shots and all kinds of weapons. And so it, it's, again, I think that the, 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 the negative on the show, and I thought like overall, even with a fantastic main event, I thought as if you're judging on the scale of takeovers, it would have been, um, uh, before the main event, I would have said it would be the, it would have been the worst takeover show to date now, because the main event was so damn good. I don't, I, I would still say it's one of the worst because of the middle. Um, and the fact that like a lot, you know, Takeovers, you know, you usually had like all great matches or mostly great matches. And this one, you know, you had a couple of okay matches. They weren't all that great. Uh, but I thought that um, part of it, you know, 
again, you had you do have greener guys than you would have in the previous takeovers against each other or women, so to speak. But also that um, you know the the redundancy factor. You know, as we brought up over and over again, there's just a very much redundancy in this show that really didn't need to be there. I think that they. I think from a booking standpoint, they totally overthought the show. They should have just let the guys go in there and do, you know, do the one weapons match. You don't need to, you know, the Halloween, I think the Halloween thing um, took away from the show. And, um, you know, they, 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 you know, you try ideas, but um, yeah, just, um, yeah, just don't do um, the door shut matches twice on the show and don't do so many weapons matches on a show, you know, because you know, it just, uh, you get tired of it uh, when you, you know, you get tired of, of, of if, if you had five matches of the exact same style, even if they're really good matches, you get tired of that too. You want the variety. And this one, um, I mean, you got a variety of entertainment options, but, but, you know, they were, there was too much, too much of that stuff that was similar. And we had the Mandy Rose Alba fire match. Alba came back, dragged Mandy to the ring they went six minutes. It was not very good. Went seven, but yeah. And then out come uh, Mandy, or I'm sorry, Gigi and JC. They get involved. The ref takes a bump. The ref doesn't see the pin. Uh, they beat up Alba, throw in the ring. Mandy hits the knee and pins her. Yes. Not, uh, didn't light my world on fire, gotta say. This coming uh, Tuesday, they announced it'll be Kane Carter and Katana Chance versus Zoe Stark and Nikita Lyons. Pretty Deadly versus Malika Blade and Edris Anofe. So two tag team title matches on the show. Yeah, they had interviews with um, um, both challenger teams. Yep. And then um, also uh, Dijak coming back to NXT. Yes, Dijak is coming back. Yep. And Shotzi and Lash Legend as well. So the main event was. Oh, oh Shotzi and Lash Legend going to go against each other? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's on the show. Oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see that. Wow. So the main event is Braun Breaker, Ilya Dragunov, and J.D. McDonough. I want to get my one criticism out of the way first. If you don't mind this, because it's the way they do things in wrestling, that's fine. I hate it. When a guy is down, Ilya Dragunov hit his finisher on Braun Breaker. And the referee goes, one, two. And his hand comes down, but J.D. McDonough jumps in and stops the hand from touching the mat. Bro, the guy got pinned. I mean, come on. I, he I didn't hate, kick out. I, 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 I hate His that. hand went up and down three times. I, I the hate, guy didn't kick out. I hate that spot. It's ridiculous. I hate that spot. Now, outside of that ridiculous spot, this match was great. Ilya Dragunov is so good. And J.D. McDonough was great in this match. Braun Breaker was great in this match. And they... You should mention, by the way, in the when, when we say that... Um, we had almost that similar spot in the very previous match because Kaylee Ray um, super kicked um, Mandy Rose into. Um, oh yeah, and the re- they pulled the ref out of the ring. Right, right, right. which they, was not a DQ. Right, and this was not a no DQ match. They yes, pulled the, they pulled the ref out of the ring, and so there's no ref as Alba Fire does her gory special bomb, and um, then Alba Fire throws the ref in, and then. Um, Dolan and Jane are both attacking her, although the referee didn't see them attacking her. And then Mandy Rose won with a running knee. But the point of that all is, is that the referee was, you know, um, yeah, they just had done basically a pin where, um, you know, where some, it's not exactly the same thing, but you know, you did the, the referee thing in the previous match. So we had a ton of great spots here in this match with these three guys, and a lot of it was, uh, you know, the big spot they built to at the end was uh, Braun Breaker and Dragunov killing each other, and then, you know, Braun hit his big finish, the uh, choke slam or the press slam into the power slam, goes for the cover. McDonough yanks him out, goes to make the cover. He's trying to steal the pin because the whole story was he was going to let these two guys kill themselves, and then he was going to go pick the bones. But of course, there was a kick out there, and so he was. That was a really good. That, that was really good because yep. they did they did tease that whole that that whole thing was teased really well, and it did look because because that's the finish of like eighty percent of your three way yes. matches, right? When, yes. they, when the heel goes over, so um, yeah, the fact that they teased that and then didn't do it, I thought that was really well done. So Dragunov hits the uh, torpedo on Braun. McDonough stops the ref from counting. They end up outside the ring, and Dragunov, 
they actually were were striking outside, and then they started running each other, and we saw the running uh, one man Spanish fly on the floor, which was awesome. So McDonough got a chair. He tried to break Dragunov's foot by swinging the chair into his foot, which was on the ring steps, but Dragunov avoided it, hit the headbutt, got in the ring, started destroying Braun Breaker. He's just destroying him. Strike, 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 strike. Fires up, goes for the torpedo, gets speared, pinned, one, two, three. I mean, the finish, we all saw the finish coming. I mean, oh, but, we, we both called it as it occurred, but but it, but was, it was the right finish. It was the right thing to do. Yes, it was It was an excellent, oh, super, excellent main event. Super match, super match. One of the best WWE matches of the year. Yeah. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, wrestlingobserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.